Now we're going to move on to look at the first reading and the psalm. Now, this first reading is all about prophecy, basically, um, and the role of Moses, and then the prophecy about a prophet like Moses to come along. So underlying that is this whole notion of the, pro- the, the power of the word. Then, uh, when we get to the gospel, you see, um, you know all this, you know, that um, he taught them as one having authority. And we have this, the exorcism uh, in chapter 1 of St. Mark's Gospel. When we get there, we'll reflect on it. Now, I want to start with this Deuteronomy text, okay? Moses spoke to the people, saying, um, Navi, this is the word for prophet, you see, Rekebeka, Yaharecha, Kamoni, Yakum, Lecha Adonai Elohecha. A prophet like me will the Lord your God raise up for you from among your own kin. To him you shall listen. And then we go back to the, the tradition in Exodus. This is exactly what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, Let us not again hear the voice of the Lord our God, nor see this great fire any more, lest we die. And the Lord said to me, This was well said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their kin and will put my words into his mouth and he shall tell them all that I command him. Now that's one of the dimensions of the theology of prophecy. I can't talk to everybody uh, face to face. They'll freak out. The people are saying, You go talk to him. You tell us what he says. You go. They see the fire on the mountain, the clouds, and hear the thunder, and they're saying, you go. You know, Victor, you go. Uh, and we'll, we'll wait, you can tell us what he says, you see. Now, that's one of the dimensions of prophecy. It's one of the reasons why prophets, except for Isaiah, whenever anybody is called for the job, they all say, I don't want it. I don't want this job. It's too heavy. It's too hard. I'm going to have to tell them what you want me to tell them, and they're going to be mad at me and kill me. And um, it makes me some kind of a nut. I, and I don't want the job. Jeremiah says, if you remember, you know, before you were in the womb, I knew you. And Jeremiah says, ah, Lord, look, I'm just a boy. You know, I can't handle this job. And the Lord says, don't you say you're just a boy. You go to the people I send you to. He doesn't take a lot of excuses, you see. Uh, when the uh, prime minister of the northern kingdom says to Amos, uh, go on home and peddle your prophecy there up in the south. Don't but come up here with your take care of the poor and all that stuff. You know, the king doesn't want to hear it. Go home. Prophesy back home where they, maybe they'll like you, you know. And Amos says, look, I'm not a prophet. I'm not the son of a prophet. I don't belong to a prophetic school or anything. God told me to come up here and tell you this, so that's why I'm here. And I'm no happier about it than you are. But I have got to be here and deliver this word. Because the Lord is telling them, your kingdom is going to be destroyed if you don't stop persecuting the poor and worshiping false gods. So you see, the Lord is saying here, I'll, you see, I'll raise up for them a prophet like you from among their kin. Whoever will not listen to my words which he speaks in my name, I will myself will make him answerable for it. But if a prophet presumes to speak in my name an oracle that I have not commanded him to speak, or speaks in the name of other gods, he shall die. And so, that's the reality of prophecy. It really is the word of the Lord delivered by a human being. And there are great prophetic figures. Other people have prophecies once in a while. Uh, But it's the word of the Lord. And in the long run, when we do some of Jeremiah in these liturgies, we'll go, he's my favorite. Uh, You know, uh, you led me on, O Adonai, and I let myself be led. 
You forced me, and you won. And I, a laughing stock all day. I've got to cry out, Hamas, violence all day. I got to, and I'm tired of it. So I resolved, I'm going to not speak in his name anymore. And so it turned like fire in my bones. And I can't hold it in any longer. It's an impulse. The Holy Spirit is telling me, you've got to preach this. You've got to get out there. You've got to do it. You know, and Jeremiah is saying, they're going to kill me. Maybe they will, but you have to do it. It's like um, another task he had. You see, but the word is powerful. The word that comes from my mouth, says the Lord, will always have its effect. You know, when he says that there in uh, the latter part of Isaiah, the word that comes from me always has its effect. So one day, Jeremiah had to stand there and uh, in the front of the national shrine, which would be the temple in those days, huh? Hey, Kal Adonai, hey, Kal Adonai, hey, Kal Adonai, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord. I'm telling you, says the Lord, if you don't change, you bring all your sins in here, all your adultery, all your murder, all your thievery, all your blasphemy, all your worshiping of false gods, and you think I'm impressed? I'm telling you, this temple is going to be destroyed. And he's standing there telling him all that. Because the Lord told him to. That's mercy of the Lord. Prophecy is mercy. So when it happens, ah, yeah, it's because we sinned. You see? So they put him in, they dump him in a cistern, a dry one, but in a cistern. We don't want to hear any more from this guy. So that's why the prophets generally, Isaiah, Interestingly enough, whom shall I send? Send me! He's the only one who said, I'll do it, you know. But this is a meditation on prophecy. A word from the Lord, delivered by a human being under obedience to the Lord. And so, and it has its effect. It's a word that has its effect. And so, this is a prophecy. Now, on one level, the prophecy, the, this prophecy is saying, uh, this prediction of the future, uh, there will be other prophets like me, and you shall listen to them, okay? But it's put in such a way, as you just heard, a prophet like me will the Lord your God raise up from among your kin. Now, of course, you see, uh, you don't have um, a prophet. You, you can't say that in Hebrew. You see, Navi, Mekebecha, Meahecha, Kamuni, Yakim Laka, and so forth. See, a prophet from your midst, of, uh, from your brethren, like me, the Lord will raise up. It doesn't say there's just going to be one. There's going to be prophets like me. Listen to them. But expectation got such that there's going to be a prophet like Moses. So when our, in John, if you remember, when our Lord multiplied the, the, the loaves and the fish, the crowd said, this is the prophet. This is Moses. Because he's there in the desert supplying food for his people, just like Moses. And Jesus did it so they'd get the picture who he is claiming to be. And so we have this uh, text, you see, um, promising prophecy and prophecy with words that are powerful. It isn't saying like, you know, well, I hope you'll really do better, folks. You know, I hope, I hope you can see it in your, in your plans to uh, stop committing adultery and murder. And I think it would be good if you did that. That's not a prophecy. You know, that's how to win friends and influence people. Prophets never, they influenced people, but they didn't win friends. So that's why they didn't want the job, but they took it. Except Isaiah, he wanted the job. Okay. Uh, and so that's this prediction. A prophet like me. And uh, that the church sees fulfilled in a unique way when we get to the um, incident in Mark's Gospel when he casts out a demon with a word, because the word of a prophet is powerful. And so, the word of the Lord is powerful. And he was teaching them as one having authority. 
He's a prophet. You see? Now the psalm that goes with that is Psalm 95, okay? And this is a psalm of uh, bringing people uh, uh, to worship. This is one of the psalms um, we say the very first thing in the morning when we do the office of readings, if you do it early in the morning. And it starts off, you see, um, now they don't give you the whole text. They skip verses 3, 4, and 5. But you can look them up. But they do put down the ones that are going to be most relevant to what we're doing. So it starts off, you see. Come, let us sing joyfully to the Lord and let us acclaim the rock of our salvation, the rock who saves us. You see? Uh, let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us joyfully sing psalms to him. And so this is this response to God's action. Let us praise him. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord who made us. The last part of this, huh? Uh, oh, that today you would hear his voice. And not and not harden your hearts. Now, you see? You can hear the Lord's voice, but you can't listen to it without a soft heart. I know what he said. Yeah, but, you know, I got other stuff to do. And, uh, you see? So when you get to this last part of this um, psalm, the part we have today, well, that today you would hear his voice. Harden not your hearts as at Meribah, as in the day of Masa in the desert. That's the time when they complained about water and all that stuff. And God told Moses, take your staff and go hit that rock. But Moses got pushed out of whack himself. And he's up there, you want us, I'll show you and all that stuff. The Lord said, because you did that, you will never see the promised land. See, prophets, is, is, you know, there's occupational hazards to the job. You, nobody in his right mind wants it because it means absolute, total obedience. And so to listen to his voice, you see, means, uh, you know, to have a soft heart. Oh, that today, you see, uh, you would listen to his voice, huh? Harden not your hearts, as at Meribah, as in the day of Massa. Uh, Meribah means uh, argument from Reeve, and Massa means temptation. When your fathers tempted me, they tested me, though they had seen my works. You see? And so, they're complaining, they want water, they don't like manna, they don't, you know, and they're complaining against God who just saved them from slavery. Does that remind you of anything? Of course, us. We're always, oh, the liturgy's too long, it's too short, it's this, it's that, or whatever. You see? And so, you see, the word is powerful, but it requires a receptive heart. Amen. <laughs>